Welcome to The Deep Dive, the source material we've pulled together for today. Well, it presents a really uncompromising view of the world right now. It's not suggesting changes on the horizon. It argues that the speed of global acceleration is so intense, so extraordinary, that the future isn't a destination we're moving toward anymore. Instead, and this is a direct quote, it's collapsing toward us. That's a pretty dramatic frame, right? The idea that the future is just arriving yeah. actively <laughs> right now. And that's what we need to get our heads around today. Our mission is to unpack the mechanisms that are driving this uh, this radical compression of time. We need to define precisely what technologies are converging to create what our sources are now calling the new baseline. And that framing isn't just for effect. It's not just rhetorical. It's really an urgent call to awareness. I mean, think about it. If you accept that the future is collapsing toward you, you instantly have to shift. You go from passively, you know, and anticipating what's next to actively needing to be ready for it immediately. And the sources are very clear on this. This isn't one single innovation. It's a powerful and I'd say necessary convergence. You have to look past the hype of, say, just one piece of tech. This new baseline is formed by artificial intelligence. Of course, that's the big one. But also mm -hmm. blockchain, regulated digital identity, compliance-driven finance, real-time settlement, and increasingly autonomous systems. Okay, so these aren't just upcoming innovations anymore. Not at all. The key insight is that they are no longer siloed. Yep. They're mutually dependent layers. They have to work together for the modern economy to function at this new speed. Okay, let's unpack that. If we accept the premise that everything is speeding up, AI has to be the central engine here. How are the sources describing its role? It's obviously not just about making spreadsheets faster. No, not even close. Mm -hmm. They describe a literal collapse of the execution timeline for, well, for almost any complex task. So what does that look like in practice? Think about the old life cycle for anything complex. Designing a product, structuring a legal document, building a financial model. Historically, that took years of research, months of drafting. Weeks of execution. Exactly. Yeah. The sources actually try to quantify it. They say what once took years now takes months. Okay. What took months now takes days. And what took days now takes minutes. Minutes. That's that's a fundamental shift in our concept of duration. It is. And it's enabled by generative intelligence. Mm. It just shortens the gap between an idea and a fully executable output. Right. AI can simulate, iterate, and synthesize massive data sets almost instantly, which just removes all those human intensive steps that used to anchor the whole process in time. So the traditional planning horizons we use, three-year roadmaps, five-year strategies, they're just obsolete. The world changes before the plan is even half executed. So what's the larger implication for us, for people? That's the really profound idea the sources raise. AI isn't just improving corporate productivity. It is, in effect, accelerating human evolution. Okay, that's a big claim. Accelerating human evolution. Is that not a bit no. dramatic? What evidence do they have that we're actually evolving faster? It connects back to cognitive load and how we absorb information. We're being forced to process, synthesize, and act on information streams that are vastly more complex and faster than ever before. AI isn't just doing the work. It's like a turbocharger for our own decision-making loop. Well, so it forces us to level up our own thinking. Right. When a human can iterate through a hundred design possibilities in a day instead of two months, the velocity of your own judgment, your own learning, it accelerates dramatically. We're adapting. We're finding new ways to define problems and evaluate solutions at, you know, a machine-like speed. And if you're still relying on last decade's methods, a quarterly report, an annual conference, you just can't keep up. And that leads to the gap. It leads directly to the core warning we found in the sources. Yeah. The gap between those who get this acceleration, who master the tools, and those who are anchored to a 20th century timeline. Oh, it's widening into what they call a knowledge canyon. A knowledge canyon. That's a powerful image. It implies continuous learning isn't a competitive edge anymore. It's just survival. Yeah. But like you said, AI is only one part of this. That engine needs new roads to drive on, a new architecture for trust and value. And that's where blockchain comes in. And here's where it gets, for me, really interesting. The sources highlight this monumental shift. For the first time in history, money, identity, and trust are all becoming programmable. Yes. We hear programmable money thrown around a lot, but let's get specific. What does that actually do that a traditional bank transfer can't? That's the critical question. Traditional contracts, financial or legal, they're inert, they're static. They yeah. exist on paper or in some siloed database, mm. and they need a human to make them work. A lawyer, a bank clerk, some intermediary. Right, which adds time, cost, friction. Tons of it. 
Programmable trust, which is what blockchain enables, means value transfer, and contracts can be built into self-executing code, a smart contract. Yeah. It just replaces those slow, expensive, error-prone processes. So the AI engine is moving at light speed, generating transaction. In minutes. And you can't have it wait three days for a wire transfer to clear. The pipes have to match the speed of the data. Exactly. You can't put a jet engine on a horse-drawn cart. This fundamentally changes everything. It provides a resilient, transparent, high-velocity alternative to, I think the source called it, the brittle banking infrastructure of the 20th century. Brittle. That's a good word for it. That legacy system was designed for a world where days, not minutes, were the unit of time. It just can't handle modern velocity. And the sources are really clear. This isn't some hopeful prediction for 2030. They're defining the new standard that is being built and deployed right now. Let's list out those key features. We're talking about stable coins, real-time settlement protocols, regulated digital identity, and institution-backed digital dollars. Let's dig into stable coins. Why are they so necessary? Why not just use Bitcoin or a normal digital transfer? Volatility. For the institutional economy, we're talking multinational corporations, major banks, you need the instant settlement of the blockchain, but you also need price stability. You need it anchored to something like the dollar. Stablecoins give you the best of both worlds. Digital programmability with traditional trust. Okay, so that handles the value stability. What about the regulatory side? That's where real-time settlement and institution-backed digital dollars come in. They fulfill the compliance mandate. Institutions aren't going to just jump onto some public anonymous ledger. They can't. They need digital assets that meet existing regulations. And that's why the convergence of compliant assets with regulated digital identity is, uh, well, it's non-negotiable. It all comes back to compliance and identity. You can't have this high-speed digital finance without knowing who is on the other end of the transaction. You have to bake KYC and AML rules right into the protocol itself. Exactly. Otherwise, the speed of the blockchain just becomes the speed of money laundering. And that's a non-starter for mass adoption. That's the piece that so many early blockchain projects missed. Compliance isn't friction. In the real world, it's a requirement for scale. And this is where we move from theory to, to tangible proof. The source material doesn't just talk about these concepts. It points to specific entities building these compliant rails right now. The source directly mentions Metallicus using the XPR network and Metal Blockchain as a case study. Why them? What are they doing that validates this whole claim that the legacy system is already outdated? They're demonstrating the practical execution. I mean, a lot of early blockchain projects were brilliant technically. They were fast, they were decentralized, but they failed to integrate the governance and regulatory pieces. They just couldn't reconcile that speed with compliance. So what is Metallicus doing differently? They're providing blockchain rails designed from the ground up for the real world. That means they integrate compliance, regulated identity, and the stability of institution-backed assets right into the core architecture of the network. So it's like they're building a digital highway, but the rules of the road, the speed limits, the identity checks, are enforced by the road itself, not by some slow human checkpoint. That's a great analogy. They're showing how these compliant real-world rails will replace the legacy systems. It's the crucial leap. It proves that programmable money and regulated identity can operate together at speed and in a way that's scalable for banks and governments. It moves the conversation from, is this possible, to it's happening now. And that credibility, that compliance layer, is what allows us to make this next claim. Which brings us to the really stark conclusion the source draws. It's a wake-up call. When you combine AI's compression of time with this new compliant programmable financial baseline, the only logical conclusion is that the world you know is already outdated. It sounds dramatic, but it's just a simple assessment of technological momentum. Right. The old world runs on slowness, on intermediaries, on friction. Right. The new world is defined by zero latency value transfer and autonomous systems. If your business model needs three days to settle a transaction, you're structurally incompatible with the new economy. Full stop. So tomorrow's successful companies, they're being built right now by people who already get this. Exactly. They are not waiting for permission. They aren't asking for validation from the legacy system. They're just building its replacement. This raises a really important question about, well, about engagement. How should people react? And the source gives us a three-part warning, like a kind of practical test to see if you're participating in the future or just watching the past fade away. It's a really useful filter for self-assessment. The first warning is, if you're not actively building, you're falling behind. 
And that doesn't mean everyone has to write code. Right. It means you have to be actively participating in shaping new systems, new ideas, new products that actually use this faster baseline. Okay, so build. What's the second part? Second, if you're not continuously learning, you risk being replaced. That knowledge canyon we talked about. It requires constant effort to cross it. You have to understand how this stuff works. Third warning. And third, this one is very tactical. If you're not aligning with the networks that are actually scaling this compliant new baseline, the real-time rails, the regulated identity systems, you are anchoring your future to the past. Choosing a legacy path today is choosing to be obsolete tomorrow. So that's a clear call to action. You have to be an active, educated participant. Which brings this whole deep dive back to one central, inescapable question. The question isn't, will the world change anymore? We've established that it already has. The only question left is, who will be ready when it does? And readiness means shedding those outdated concepts. We have to stop seeing AI and compliant blockchain as these niche experiments. We need to see them as fundamental utilities. The operating system for the accelerated economy. The world is being rewired at a machine-like pace, and the infrastructure is already here to support that speed. So... To summarize our deep dive today. The future is collapsing toward us because the speed of AI has compressed years of work into minutes. And that velocity demands a new financial foundation, one delivered by blockchain that allows money, identity, and trust to be programmable, compliant, and settled in real time. The future isn't waiting for permission. It's not slowing down. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not designing itself around our comfort with the old systems. So if this technology compliant blockchain, real-time settlement, deep AI integration, if this is already the new baseline, then the core question for you, the listener, has to shift. If the timeline for global change has collapsed from decades to just years or even months, how must your own strategy shift? You can't be planning for the distant future anymore. You have to optimize for immediate readiness and adaptation because you simply can't afford to spend years preparing for what might already be here. 